call. You guys are muted. Oh, what? Yeah. Sorry, now we're not muted. Hello. It's funny because hey, we, we somehow this AMA is scheduled right at the moment that the give backs round ends. So Ashley, who's going to be sitting right here, is like last minute fixing, like setting things up. Three more, three more minutes. We 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 look like we are in a in a rocket. <laughs> in a <laughs> Ready for lift up. <laughs> We're all wearing giveth shirts, and I think that's a nice touch. <laughs> As you must. <laughs> See? Please. Sure. <laughs> Mitch was the sole dissenter to the to the give Can shirts. you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, something must have somebody put something in my cereal maybe, I don't know. <laughs> when you were a child? This a, no, this just today. <laughs> just, you know, off day guys, you know, the sole dissenter. <laughs> Yeah, you made it, Ashley. Yeah. Now our, now our, what do they call it? The Megazord <laughs> is complete. <laughs> cool. So maybe we'll uh, slowly get started. Um, and as people sort of trickle in, uh, they can trickle in. So uh, welcome to the very first Common Stack AMA of 2022. Yay! Uh, and we are delighted to be hosting one of the more extraordinary teams um, on the planet. I'm going to just go ahead and say that. <laughs> uh, the Giveth team, who just launched the Give Economy. And uh, I think maybe uh, there's a few things I want to say is if anyone has any questions, we'd love to have your questions. So please drop any questions in the community call channel and we'll sort of go through them and, uh, and bring them up in the end. Uh, maybe I'll just like, put questions here. Uh, and um, maybe just take a moment to uh, pass it to the Giveth team to introduce yourselves uh, one by one, and then we'll get started from there. What? Oh, yeah. So I'll who wants to start? Hi, Lauren. Um, I am working with Giveth for about a year now. I, I'm the comm steward, and I was also doing product management for the economy, so just like a lot of cat herding and organizing and putting pieces together. Uh, should I pass it? Yeah. Pass it to Sam. <laughs> Hello, I am Sam. Um, I am not uh, part of the Giveth team, but I am part of the Giveth community, and it happened that I was here during this day, so... Uh, <laughs> so not I, true. <laughs> <laughs> Such a lie. I could have never so, launched the Giveth economy without you. So. I know, Sam's uh, so important. <laughs> and uh, it is very nice to be here. I am part of OneHive, and... Uh, I can gladly ask about, uh, answer about Garden's questions. I will pass it to Grip. Sam is so underselling his contributions. During the whole launch, we're like, oh, this is broken in Gardens. He's like, I'll fix it. Oh, yeah, I can fix it. Him and Gabby were critical uh, for making it all happen. But I'm Griff. Uh, I think most of the people, I know most of the people in this call, but <clears throat> uh, I found it giveth and... Uh, five years ago in the common stack as well. I'm a major co-founder of both of those projects and uh, am really excited about the, the combination of the two. And really that's where the magic happens. Uh, I'll pass it to Ashley. Hi, I'm Ashley. I've been contributing to Giveth for just over a year now and I do a lot of community management, project verification, things like that, Discord stuff. <laughs> Mitch? Cool. Yeah, my name is Mitch. I started at the same time as Ashley and Lauren. Um, I'm the DAO steward. I do some work in development and in comms, and I make sure that our DAOs are working smooth and as they should be. Um, so I'll give it back to Tam. Yeah, well, thanks. All right, so, um, you know, I saw there's a question that came up um, on one of the social medias asking about the relationship between common stack and giveth. And I think there is actually a great story here. So I think it's a good part, uh, great uh, part for us to start with. Uh, what is the, um, the genesis story of the common stack and how does it relate to giveth? And I'm going to pass the grip to share that story with everyone. Yeah, so 
Actually, the common stack really started out as part of just a project within Giveth. Uh, if you'll notice the conviction voting articles, the augmented bonding curve articles, and everything that we're writing in 2019 was actually published first on Giveth. And uh, because it was all just Giveth. But then we realized that um, it's easier to focus the concerns. Uh, the common stack is really going right at, at like, right at the goal, which is let's create economies around causes and and build uh, re you know regenerative pr uh, processes for rewarding people who are doing good work for society. And uh, common stack is really going for the nerds. Of the nerds. It's a different audience, uh, and it's very web well focused. Whereas Giveth is really focused on the um, nonprofits directly, and the communications and and the the like. The, the process and, and approach that needs to be taken has to be completely different. So common stack kind of uh, spun out of Giveth and became uh, and became like for the nerds of the nerds, whereas Giveth can still focus more on the, the actual nonprofit people doing good work on the ground, and we can try to skill them up so they can do the same stuff that the nerds can do. Cool, thanks. And welcome everyone else who's joined. I just want to say if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the community hall channel uh, so we can get to asking the Giveth team about them. And, um, you know, one of the things about the relationship between Giveth and Common Stack is Common Stack uses Giveth to, to do so many, so many things, including the trusted seed. So all of the trusted seed members pay their membership uh, and the back end of that is Giveth as well. Um, I guess I want to ask uh, Lauren if you want to give a shout out to any other blockchain for good projects in the space uh, that are associated with Giveth and Common Stack. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, there's the there's the TC. The TC is really associated with Giveth and the Common Stack. And actually, a lot of the resources from the TC we've been using in Giveth, and like the TC is about to also launch their 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 token. They're doing the Commons upgrade soon, and um, they're they're going to be using a garden too. And so we were, when we were working with like One Hive, oh yeah, also One Hive, obviously One Hive created the platform for communities to create the gardens. So Giveth is using the One Hive Gardens to have our Give Garden, which is like our, our the DAO where Give Token holders can vote on proposals that are requesting funds from the DAO. And then while we were developing this, we were also using the dashboard that was developed by the TEC to choose the params for Giveth and um, just kind of like tweaking it. And, and it was a super, super valuable tool. And um, yeah, and then there's also other par partners and projects that we're connected to on Giveth. We have a partners page, partnerships page on Giveth.io, but other ones are like Bright ID, who we also, they also supported us a lot. Like when we were launching our token, they had launched their token just before. And so we got to learn a lot of lessons from them and like how they created their garden and how that impacted their, their end results in their garden and what we want to do differently. And so they helped us a lot. They also helped us with, um, we have the Uni V3 um, liquidity mining opportunity. So you can provide liquidity on the Uni, on Uni V3 and uh, stake NFTs. So they helped us a lot. So we basically just used their code to make that happen. And then for the rest of the Give Farm, um, we used a lot of the development done by Dapnode. So Dapnode created the rest of the liquidity mining, uh, like the whole, like a lot of the code, and they supported us a ton. And like there was a lot of crossover between people from Dapnode, people from One High, people from the TEC and the Common Stack, and Bright ID, like all coming together. And we really couldn't have launched the Give Economy without the support of like this entire ecosystem of blockchain for good people. And the Giving Log. I love <laughs> And the Giving Log, <laughs> Ashley just mentioned. With Ashley uh, is, is our project verification queen, and the Giving Block uh, is a platform for that. Not the Giving Block basically helps nonprofits create projects where they can start raising crypto, and they do a lot of support for their nonprofits, and they have a ton of amazing nonprofit projects. And we did a partnership with the Giving Block and did an integration where now we have all of these Giving Block projects on Giveth.io as verified projects, and it, it boosted our verified projects on the DAF, um, like with hundreds of amazing verified projects that are like right from them. So now you can donate on Giveth to Giving Block projects, and it goes to the Giving Block projects, and it's like such a valuable partnership as well. Yeah, I, was just gonna say, I love the way you came around full circle. And it's like, ah, we can't do this without each other. I, I, I like that message. It's really, 
really true too. Totally. I mean, uh, when Sam was like, I'm not really part of Give With Him, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you ta-? It was like last I mean, down to the wire. We're like, Sam, it's broken. Sam, help us. And he's like, don't worry, don't worry. And look I, at this guy. Yeah, he's I decked did, out. I, did, <laughs> I mean, at the, at the very end, as, as you have explained, it's a lot of people in a lot of communities and the line between them is not uh, it, it is very small it is uh, you, you can be part of one and part of the other and uh, still are you are helping all the ecosystem to grow so I think that this is the proper way to to think about that yeah I, I agree with that sentiment too all right so I'd love to talk a little bit about Giveth and the trusted seed. Uh, so I'm going to pass to Mitch. Uh, could you want to share what the Giveth mission is overall, sort of from a high level? Um, well, the Giveth mission is to help projects uh, receive funding and um, projects that are doing good. And so we do that in a lot of different ways. Um, um, but we have also, sorry, can you repeat the question, Tam? Yeah, just what's the what's like high level the giveth mission? Uh, I think you guys spent some time in your mission, vision, and values too, and just to get a sense of um, what the what the, the high mission is of giveth. Okay, well, if you like the the direct quote is to reward um, to empower and reward projects in society um, to the world to donors to givers to makers and to all the other great parties out there. Cool. Sounds ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, I see that there's actually um, a lot of people probably missing from here. So maybe you guys want to give a shout out to a few of the other people who are crucial to making this happen in Given. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I can shout out. There are tons. I mean, people on our team who aren't like the face of, of Giveth, you don't like see them coming to calls as much like Amin, Cherik, Mohammed, Mateo, Ramin, Monique, all of these people are working in the background force is helping with project verification and Donna was helping with project verification as well. And it's like Carlos, Carlos who else have we got that's amazing? Carlos, Carlos helped with the giving block integration. Amin was like, just like our, our dev that we just like lean on for everything all the time, who doesn't sleep. It just works really hard. I feel like and then we had Gabby. Gabby, sure. and then even people from General Magic, like, Marco. and people who are part of the common stack. Marco did all the designs, and he got some support from Rodri and Katarina, and then we had Pedro, Fabio, and Vitor coming in at the last minute just to, like, we had all of these issues, and we were pushing really hard to launch at Christmas, and it was like, get more people in, and then Pedro, Fabio, and Vitor, like, all jumped on, and we called them, like, the three Brazilian ninjas, and they, like, really supported to kind of push the ball forward, and then in, in collaboration with the, the devs that we had working full-time on it, like Cherik and Mohammed and Amin, and then on the dev side, we had, like, yeah, Mateo, Carlos, Ramin. Yeah, and then, <laughs> like, connections with... Uh, uh, Brian ID, David, uh, helped a lot with the Uni V3 pool connection, and uh, obviously Fabri uh, also helped a lot from the garden side, as well, alongside Gabby, and then we had a smart contracts auditing team and revision team. This is like Edu from Dapnode, Pavle, uh, who just joined Giveth recently, and Jesus from IDEN3, which is another shout out to another organization that supports us a lot. Jordi as well wrote the, wrote the GiveStream contracts from the get-go. Uh, that I do with I do, and so man, it's just like I'm sure we're forgetting a bunch of people. It, it, it was a huge team effort, and then well, the giving block guys, right? Alex, Alex. anyone else? In Alexi, the Alexi. Yeah, it takes it takes a community to do something like this. Uh, cool. Okay, so now I want to ask a little bit about the trusted seed and how did Giveth go about selecting. Um, for the Giveth airdrop and why the trusted seed? And then the second part of that question is how can the trusted seed get more involved with the Give Economy? And then maybe we can even go deeper into the Give Economy. I get, I so uh, I don't know who wants to take this one, who wants to field uh, how the trusted seed was selected. I can definitely feel how the trusted seed was selected. So the Giveth also has a trusted seed. The trusted seed concept I think is really critical. It's like you don't want to just give anybody a lot of governance power over your start. Like imagine if you had a startup and you're like just taking money from any investor who wants to, you know, exploit you for profit, you know, uh, that's not going to, you're probably not going to succeed. And, 
And uh, in Web3, it's the other way around. Who do you want to give your token to? You don't, you don't want to give your token to a bunch of people who are just looking to extract value. They'll sell it. They don't care about what you're trying to do. So we really focused on donors in the space, uh, altruistic impact investors, people who have been part of DAOs that were uh, altruistically minded, uh, like Meta Cartel, people who donated to CLR Fund, WeTrust, Gitcoin, and various other um, more um, like fundraising platforms like Moloch, Moloch DAO members. And um, I, I mean, there's so many blockchain for good DAOs, Yale, Whaler DAO. And, uh, and so many other projects. So we, we tried to uh, get as many addresses as we could. Uh, and also we uh, went down our, tw our Twitter followers list and just kind of pulled out the people who have supported us in the past, as well as all the Giveth users in the past and Giveth donors uh, and, and various things. But we did make a, a strong cutoff because uh, in March of this year, it really got to be unreasonable with airdrop hunters. And, and the data got polluted. Like, oh yeah, look at all these people that are altruistic. Oh, actually they're not altruistic. They're pretending to be altruistic to make money. And that was a real challenge for us. So we actually had to make a cutoff uh, for a lot of, uh, a lot of our uh, systems because they were, just, they were just trying to do it for the money and that's not who we want in our trusted seed. That's those, the people who wanna make money, they can come in now and farm and they can do other things. But for that initialization, we really wanted to only give the tokens out to, to people who we believe are tr have the intentions of making the world a better place. And the trusted seed is like the, a great curated list of people who have been filtered uh, by uh, uh, Maffer and Unesi uh, and uh, Dan to make sure that they actually are not airdrop seekers. And that's what made the trusted seed list like a no brainer to include in the give drop. And, uh, and I don't know who wants to take on, I don't know, Mitch, maybe you could take on what people in the Trusted Seed could do. Now that they're members, what should we get them to do? You mean within the give economy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to participate, right? So, I mean, now that you've got all these gift tokens, it's like, you know, use the farm, participate in the garden. You can give them back to projects and then, you know, get more give back from give back. So, I mean, there's like... There's tons of different options you can do now that you're give token holders. Yeah, I mean the yields are insane. You know, how are you not farming? Yeah, Tam actually made so the end of give backs round one was this. Well, it was this morning? It was just uh, you know 18 minutes ago. It ended at the, when this call started. This was the end of the first give backs round. So anyone who's donated to verified anyone who's donating to verified projects within those two weeks get gift tokens back when we distribute the gift tokens and it was like we we made a last minute announcement of like oh donate to these verified projects you could be part of this like exclusive group of, like the people who donated and give back to round one and um and then i went to the farm and i harvested some gift tokens and then i went and i donated them and i told other people to do it and tam did it too and she's like it was such a rush and i just thought it was so cool because i felt the same way it was like i was Ape into the give farms, and then I made a bunch of give, and then it was like, you know, give that I just got from like give that I got, and then I gave it to other projects, and then I'm gonna get more give so that I can give it again. It was like so fun, and it, it felt like crazy and like really thrilling, and I just really related to the comment that you made, Tam, when you were like, what a rush. I was like, that's how I felt. Give! And I also, I, I also would like to add that it is something that is not finished here, that right now it's it's only the beginning. Uh, this is not anyone now can uh, ask for a proposal in the Give Garden in order to add new features to the Give Economy. Uh, I think that what we have right now is just the launching platform for the Give Economy, but uh, it's like the seeds that now has to flourish and, and uh, bring life to the economy, right? Um, the idea of, of, the, of gardens is that we are uh, proactive communities. Uh, so people ask for the, for the gift in order to create things for, for the garden itself. Um, so this is the start. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I just want to add on to the one thing that um, that I, I shared on the Giveth Discord, which was it felt like um, like a shopping spree. 
like, here's all this free give, and now just go give it to all these amazing projects. And I, I ended up spending a lot more time than I had anticipated because I got really sucked into all of the projects and all of the amazing things they're doing and just having all of this give to give away. And that was like the real big rush. It's like, it's like a shopping screen, screen for like impact projects. It's really extraordinary. The experience was extraordinary. So anyone who hasn't done that yet, go harvest, go farm your give, harvest your give, and give back to the community. It's really like a incredible experience. And um, maybe we'll jump into the give gardens since uh, Ronald uh, asked the question on the community hall, uh, asking basically, um, uh, <clears throat> what is the focus of the projects in the give gardens um, that you expect uh, to see there and how should they develop the give it, give it te uh, technically? Uh, would a project that helps communities organize themselves and better benefit from donations also be suitable for give garden or is that something else? Sounds like he's talking about two different things like making a project on giveth and then making a proposal in the give garden if I understood. So these aren't the same things and this is a really interesting communication issue that's come up. So if you are requesting funding for something that's related to give as an org that benefits give as an org you would make a funding proposal in our give garden but if you have a project that's doing good that's not necessarily related to give then you make a project on giveit.io maybe that helps clarify the question a little bit yeah so the garden yeah, let's... the garden's not meant to fund nonprofits it's actually meant to build the give economy so it's a it's it's like if there is something that is both like, uh, you know, like Sam has a project called uh, 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 Osmosis Funding. If he said, hey, I want to, you know, it's a project on Giveth, but it's like, I want to make this as an add-on to the Give economy, then it could get funding from the Give Garden and be a project on Giveth. But if it's like uh, like David DYOR's project to feed the homeless in Chilliwack, BC, it's like great project, not going to, shouldn't get money from the Give Garden. Okay, yeah, that distinction makes a lot of sense. Um, what kind of other projects are you expecting to um, to request funding from Give Garden specifically to build the Give Economy ecosystem? So, so there's one person who wants to add Polygon as a as an option to the DAP. That's that's a great one. Uh, other people have been calling for widgets uh, so that they can donate. On, with crypto on their own website using Giveth as a, as a backend. Uh, token swaps are the big one that's coming up right now. Uh, Sam fund it has a request that's going to pass pretty soon for EVM CRISPR support. Uh, there's another person who actually screwed up and sent their money to the token contract. That's the other proposal that's up right now, and it's a legitimate proposal to support users who screw up, right? Uh, but it's really about the give economy. Does anyone else? I think somebody is going to make a proposal to, for translation of documentation, so it can also be like for rewarding contributors who um, provide value to the community. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to have people come in and create proposals in the garden and then like have like a strong lead and they're like going to champion this and they're like, I'm going to make this thing happen. We have lots of people coming into the discord and like asking questions and, um, and, and really wanting like having passion and motivation. And then it's like the, the give garden is a great place for people who see a need that would benefit the whole give ecosystem to then like create a team, create a project, create a proposal and then request funding from, from the give garden. And then it's like, they can run forward with it. Cool. And while we're in the Give Gardens, maybe we dig a little deeper into this before we move on to something else. Um, uh, the design choice of conviction voting in Give Gardens. Um, I guess that, that uh, Sam, maybe you can share a little bit about why conviction voting and what are the advantages of conviction voting over other voting mechanisms? Okay. Uh, all the gardens, um, Gardens are DAOs that are, are on DAOs that has some specific applications uh, that makes them a garden, right? So the most I, I will argue that the most important application of, of a garden is conviction voting. It is what makes the garden be a truly decentralized DAO because uh, anyone, whatever uh, they 
if they even if they don't have the whole community support they can at least gain some um, support from the com community in order to do something if you, obviously if you have a lot of support from, from the community you can fund things that are uh, bigger and faster but even the minorities of a garden can um, organize and fund things that fund, fund, fund things that are interesting for them or they think that it are interesting for the whole community but maybe the community still don't don't see them so um, it's not like uh, they, they are not DAOs that are um, ruled by the majority but everyone uh, with good ideas can get a little piece of their uh, support and uh, push the gardens in a direction that is not where every, the majority wants to go. So I, I think that it's what makes gardens different than, than, than other DAOs. And I hope that this mechanism that was made uh, initially in, as, a, as a given uh, idea can expand to other kind of, of DAOs, not only Aragon DAOs or Gardens, but also other other places. And, cool. and we have a number of people from the Token Engineering Commons present today too. So uh, do you want to just highlight the differences between the Give Gardens and Token Engineering Commons? In, re in relation to the, to the Gardens itself, I think that the, the parameters... Yeah, the gardens I think that the parameters are going to be different. Uh, the TC garden is still, um, the parameters are still decided right now. So um, there, are, there are going to be debates and there are already five proposals that are the runoffs. I, am, I don't know if I am saying that, that right. But yeah. um, it, it is still not decided which are going to be the final parameters of TC. Uh, for gardens, I think that you, Griff, were one of the persons who were uh, designing the, the gardens economy. Maybe you, you as well, Mitch? I, I'm not sure about Mitch, that. Mitch, Lauren, and I. And actually, Ashley, you were here too. Yeah. We, we all got our hands dirty with the with the gardens parameters, but there's bigger differences, like we're using give tokens, TTs, XDI. I don't know if you want to go into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like super structural differences, Veneto versus Boboli or whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, the the thing is that with gardens, uh, with the normal gardens, you have the the same token that you are requesting is the same token that people is voting for. This is the normal gardens, and give it is a normal garden. This is a. It has a lot of different extensions. It has a bonding curve instead of asking for. Um, the token garden you are asking for X type, which is uh, in the common pool, and it comes from the fees from the bonding curve. It has, it is way different. I, I would argue that um, whereas TC is the common stack vision, uh, gardens is a simplified version of this vision that was launched first, and. Each, each of them has different pros and cons, and this is why the, the, they two exist. Yeah, and some of the other big differences are, like, in Giveth, you have to wrap your tokens to vote, so actually only governance give can vote in the garden, whereas in TEC, if you have tokens, you can vote whenever, uh, and that's also true for DAO voting. Uh, so, like, anyone holding TEC can vote in a DAO vote uh, to change the parameters of the garden or do anything, but in in uh, Giveth, you actually have to wrap your tokens first. If someone makes a DAO vote uh, in the Give Garden, then you had to have had your wrapped mm -hmm. tokens. It takes in. a snapshot. So if you hadn't already wrapped your tokens, you're not able to wrap them and vote on it. Yeah. So it's, it gets a little bit trickier in the Give Garden compared to the TEC Garden. Yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of little differences between the two uh, that make that make things uh, that give a different cultural impact on how things will work. 
Okay. And then for the trusted seed members who received give and who are probably now farming and staking their give, uh, does that, how does that impact their voting? Are they, do they have voting rights in the give garden? So if they're, if they're farming in a single asset, so like only 100% give, then that actually gives them wrap give or G give. So they're able to vote using that. But if they're providing liquidity, either on sushi swap, Uniswap, honey swap, whatever, that will not count towards their, their governance power. And it's only on XDAI, the, the wrap give on, on XDAI, 100% give staking pool. Yeah, it's kind of a trick. Oh. We kind of tricked the farmers. The, the, yes, you're earning a yield, but guess what? You're earning a yield by participating in our government. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it's actually a fantastic incentive to earn governance tokens through providing, uh, through staking. That's a really neat mechanism. Cool. Yeah, you guys have done so many things, like like amazing designs, amazing execution. I, I just, it's, it's incredible. All right, let's maybe talk about givebacks. So um, who wants to sort of give a rundown on givebacks, how they work, and um, how people should expect to uh, interact with them and receive them? I, actually, I'll, I'll take on how givebacks work really quick, but then uh, Ashley's got to tell us all about project verification because it's a critical piece of it. But givebacks are super cool because it's the first time ever where donating has an upside, right? Like, that's never happened before. But if you go and donate some ether to verified projects, then you're going to get give tokens in return. Those give tokens uh, are going to be par partially, they'll be liquid uh, that, and accessible, but most of the give tokens will go into a stream. And the stream will last is for five years, and maybe we can talk about the stream in another question. But this is really cool. You, in the long, at, at, at the time of donation, you're better off honestly just buying gift tokens than donating you'll get more give you, like we still make sure that everyone who donates gets less give in the u.s dollar value than what they're donating because otherwise it's not a donation right we don't want people buying give via donations uh we want people to donate and then give back to the donors but if because of the stream uh if the gift tokens price goes up over over the next several years then actually they will have made more money than they did donating, which is which is crazy, right? That's never this is this is the kind of stuff that can only happen in Web three. But a lot of this is based off of the work that Ashley is doing uh, around project verification, uh, because not, you don't just you can't just donate to any project; you can only donate to verified projects. Well, we started out, you know, we have a lot of the Giving Block projects integrated. I think there's over 700 now. And so that was really nice because they've all been through a really rigorous verification process. They all have to be registered in the United States to be the projects on the Giving Block. So that gave us a lot of, like, a good chunk of really good projects to work with. And then we have kind of like a centralized system as of right now for verif verifying projects. It's pretty cool because they don't all need to be registered ver uh, NGOs in any country. As long as they can prove that they are who they say they are, that they're using the funds and what they say they're using it for, and that they have enough reputation at stake that they won't be participating in like fraudulent or malicious activity. Um, and so then we review them. There's a team and um, kind of process that goes with that. And it goes, yeah, so two week rounds in your project has to apply for verification at least one week before the, the beginning of the round that you want to be eligible for. And and then we'll review the data afterwards and make sure there's a fraud in that Cool. And how many total verified projects did you say there were on uh, Gareth right now? Um, there were 954, and I just verified like 12 more, so like 970 or something. Wow, yeah, that's extraordinary. <laughs> Lots of options. Cool. Um, and so anyone who, who donates to a project gets back some liquid and some stream. Yeah. At, in Gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. The, the Give stream is, is like a continuous flow of Give, and it flows out to anyone who's participating in the Give economy and earning Give tokens. Uh, for five years, a little less than five years now, because it already started from five years from launch. So it goes until 2026, December 2026. And um, 
yeah, basically like everyone's give stream can only go up and you can get a give stream by, for example, donating to projects and getting give tokens and give back then you get a gift stream. And then if you had a gift stream before and you donate to more projects and you get more give backs later, your gift stream increases. And it's like a continuous flow of gifts. So every week you're getting more gift tokens from the gift stream. And regardless of what you do, even if you like that's you participate in two give backs rounds and then you're like, ah, oh, that's enough and you never participate ever again, you still get the same give per week flow rate until uh, December 2026. You just keep getting more give every week. So it's like your gift stream can only ever go up the more you participate and support the give economy. Um, and, and then, so your give tokens over time, you'll kill, still keep getting more give. Um, yeah. And uh, like one of the main purposes of the give stream is that like, as, so right now we're like launching the give economy and it's starting out relatively small and humble. And then over time there becomes more give tokens available everywhere and give it becomes bigger and the, the DAO becomes bigger and more things are happening all over the place. And we want our givers, all the people who are our givers, all the people who are supporting the give economy to get like increasing governance rights as that happens. So it's like as the giveverse expands, the governance rights of all the people in the give economy also increase because you can use your gift tokens to vote on proposals in the garden and request funding. And yeah, so the give stream is like a really, really, really cool thing. I, I love this like number only ever goes up. Your give stream number can only ever go up. It starts here and it only goes up. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah. just a, it's a really cool Web three way to earn 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 more funding. You know, it's like you earn tokens, but now you're also earning a stream of tokens. You know, it's basically like you're building your own UBI, your own residual income. So all you got to do is add, add value to give it, and then you'll end up with this increasing your stream. Uh, it's it's really novel, super cool. And the five years, uh, what, how did that design choice come about? Well, we had a vote. Um, we were in the forum there. We proposed the give stream and like how long it's going to be. And then between the, the contributors of give it, we just kind of went through advice process and decided how long it was going to be. Are there any other projects that are doing something like this yeah. in terms of, okay. Um, Actually, the idea first came from Dapnode, I believe. I didn't, I, I didn't 3D did it for their vesting. Mm -hmm. And then Dapnode, yeah, Dapnode, Dapnode took, took it, it, and I think theirs is like two or three years or something like that. And so they have like the, the node stream and the node reservoir. And so we just kind of got rid of the concept of the node of the reservoir and just like, here's the stream, you know, just like abundance and it can only ever go up. Yeah, psychologically, it's really powerful. <laughs> it's it's a real difference than like just sort of having a, a one drop of tokens just to see, see this like as you said a kind of um, synonymous UBI. Mm -hmm. All right, very cool. Um, I just want to see is there anything else we want to touch upon on givebacks? Uh, anything that we we uh, didn't say yet? It's it's the people who are donating, and what about the projects themselves? Uh, are the people who um, submit projects do they also receive givebacks? No, they got they got some give drop. Uh, every project that was on the platform before we launched got a little bit of tokens from the give drop and, and give stream. But givebacks is is a second order effect to support the nonprofits. For instance, grassroots economics. We've, we've worked with Will to get him verified before launch, and because he's a verified project, lots of people donated to him. They raised over $8,000 in the give back round, and Will's like messaging me, this is awesome, you know? Uh, but they, we, they don't get any give directly, but the donors are donating to them. The donors that are donating to him are subsidized by give. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a, a second order effect that supports the projects. But we go straight to the donors, who are the people who have to choose who, what projects do they want to support, and that's it's uh, that's kind of the strategy. Yeah, it's really part of our overall mission of rewarding and empowering those who give, and also like what giveth is, and like what we wanted to do is create a DAO that is governed by givers, the DAO that is governed by the people that are giving and supporting. So projects benefit from givers, people wanting to use giveth because then they can get give tokens, and then givers benefit. The, the people who are giving, they get give tokens and then they can start governing and participating a little bit more in, in the whole DAO ecosystem. 
Yeah, it's super clear. It's, and it's, um, it's, what percentage of cut does Giveth take from the donations that are made to the projects? <laughs> zero, no zero. <laughs> we just give to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so it's actually so important that uh one hundred percent of the donation goes to the project. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is this is the magic of Web3. It's like a hundred percent of the money goes to the project and we pay you to donate. It's like we give away a million tokens every two every two weeks. We give away a million tokens to the donors, up to a million up, tokens. Yeah. I mean it, we can never <laughs> let people um get more than they give, right? Uh so we have a cap. Uh, of seventy five percent of of uh, what you donate, but uh, that's a confusing concept. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a confusing 75% concept. Seventy five percent is a very confusing number. Yeah. If you want to know about it, read our documentation, and you'll be confused. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But in the yeah, the, the the main message is the same. We don't we don't take fees. We we pay you to donate. Cool. So uh, there's a lot of people on this call, and this is not something you see every day. So how do you not have questions? Drop your questions in the community call, because this is so, so, so such an amazing project that is doing something that's never been done before in completely novel ways with completely novel tools. All right, cool. Um, should we talk a little bit about the Give Farm? Yeah. Who can explain how the Give Farm works and um, who is the target audience to participate in that? Well, I, I can at least say that we need the Give Farm to support the Give Backs program. Giving people give and when they donate doesn't mean anything if it's not if it doesn't have liquidity in the market. So the Give Back program, Give Backs program necessi necess uh, necessitates. It's Thank you. You can take it. Uh, well, I mean, basically, just like Griff was saying, if we give people give tokens and there's no liquidity, it just becomes, it doesn't really have any value anymore because it's not liquid. It can't be traded for funds that can actually go to, like, helping the project out. So it kind of defeats the purpose. So the, the Give Farm creates these incentivized pools for people to provide liquidity. And so we've got a sushi swap pool with um, a Give and ETH. We've got a unit, uh, honey swap pool with Give and Honey, uh, Balancer with Give ETH. Give ETH, and then a UNIV3 pool with Give ETH as well. So we are on mainnet and next time. At the end, the ETH is Give F, uh, except for Give Honey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the Give Honey pair is, is quite interesting because the higher it is, the on the more on the top it appears in the uh, when you go to gardens.onehive.org so it's a, an interesting way to know which are the most popular gardens among which are the gardens that have more liquidity that has more, that, that have more resources in in, in onehive and give it right now is like the, the top, top yeah top, top, like top. instantly like boom to the top the give honey pool yeah, give give honey is the largest pool on on honey swap and one of the largest on X Dye altogether. And I like the give honey pair a lot too because give give it and one hive are like projects that are working together and like it's like we're we're in collaboration and cooperation. So it's like if you're providing give honey liquidity, it's like you're holding give, you're holding honey, and these are like two projects that are like really aligned with like the values of the trusted seed they're like things that i care about i feel great about give honey i'm like yeah i love honey love give like whatever it's like even if the price like shifts a little relative one to the other i'm still happy because i have give and i have honey <laughs> and these aprs won't last for long uh, you know farming i think om om uh, olympus dow really brought this idea uh, across of like you don't want to farm for liquidity you want to own liquidity and so our big push is to get do token swaps with other communities and, and start having protocol controlled liquidity so that the give economy doesn't need to rely on farming. So get in the farms now because that's the because this won't last forever. And so it brings up a bunch of questions, actually. Uh, so the one is, for people that are new to farming, how would you recommend they uh, they get their feet wet in give economy? and give farms mm. well i would say the easiest way would be just like the single asset so like if you get give either you 
you get it through givebacks or you purchase it on a, on a DEX, a decentralized exchange, then you could just take that give and put it right away into the, the give farm. Just like give, that's it. If you want to get a little bit more spicy, you can like buy some ETH and then make a liquidity pool on SushiSwap and then like stake it in there. Um, and then the same thing with give honey. And so you just basically have to like hold give and then have an equivalent amount in value of the other asset. So 50-50 for most cases. I think balancer is a little bit different. 80-20. Yeah. If you're a whale and you want to buy give, then you could always go into the uni v3 pool and just put like a little bit of give and a lot of ETH. And then uh, if the price goes down, you're basically buying, you're being paid yield, you're earning yield while you're buying your give, uh, which is cool. Or also the other way, if you want to sell give, you could also do it the other way, but don't do that. Don't yeah. sell your give. And I really, it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, and, and I really think like for people who are just getting started with the, with the farms, it's way more nice to do it on X type because the gas fees are so much cheaper. So it's like if you're new and you're fresh, mainnet can like get costly. You're like starting to stick your tokens and then it ends up costing you a bunch of ETH and it gets like really overwhelming. But on XDAI, it's always fractions of a penny every time you do anything. So you go in the give farm, you go on XDAI, like Mitch said, you stake in the 100% give staking pool, it costs you a penny, you earn some APR. And then I think this is really like the nice, like starting to understand how the pieces work together. And so, I mean, as with learning anything, just like to, to be easy on yourself and take it a little slow. And the best way to do that is like XDAI give staking. And then the extra advantage is when you do that, you can use those tokens to vote in the garden. <laughs> so this is uh, what we might consider farming for good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if, uh, you know, if somebody has more questions, can they hop into the Give with Discord server and ask for help? Uh, and maybe is there anyone that can hold their hand along the way? Ashley, maybe you can, yeah, you can share some... <laughs> Some insights and some, um, you know, welcoming message to people who might want to uh, to learn more about this, but aren't sure what what to do and maybe need to hold your hands. Definitely, definitely, we can post a link to the, an invite to the server. It's actually cool. just discord.giveth.io. Easy to remember. Yeah, it's super easy. So all this swag you're wearing. Tell, tell us a little bit about the swag. I think the trusted seed uh, should all be wearing their swag too these days. Tell us a little bit about how that worked. Yeah, there's a swag drop. So so uh, we actually gave everyone a little bit of X die too for gas fees. So everyone who got a claim drop, uh, who earned the give drop, actually just got a little bit of X die so that they could claim their give drop without having to worry about it. But we also gave everyone uh, G Love tokens, not Glove. <laughs> uh, but uh, but so there's uh, if you are in a give drop if you're in the trusted seed you can actually go at, just like the trusted seed did with the swag store uh, you can actually go to swag.giveth.io and uh, pick out there's mugs and hats and shirts uh, I don't think this shirt's on that shirt's on there this that great. shirt's on there. Uh, the, the shirt, the back row people, we got some OG shirts. But uh, you could get this dreamy hat though. Yeah, look at those hats. <laughs> I've seen lots of hats on video calls. And good dispersal too. I haven't seen the mugs yet, man. I can't wait. Willie we has get, one. Willie got a mug. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait till our mugs get here in Costa Rica. It's taking some time to get it into Costa Rica. But lots of people are already getting their swag, and it's really fun. You know, it's like I don't know too many airdrops where you get a swag drop alongside it. So I, I've never heard of anyone doing that actually. Have you guys? I don't know. Yeah, and and make sure that when you when you so you have G Love tokens, you have fifty G Love is so is what we sent to people with the drop. That gets you two things. So get two things. Some people have gotten one and then been like, damn, I paid shipping and I have more. I didn't realize. So get two things. You could get a hat, a mug, a shirt. And then it comes. And then also when you get your swag, it brings me so much joy to see people posting it on Twitter. There have been a bunch of people posting their mugs and their shirts. And I get so excited. I run the give with Twitter. Just like, oh, I love it. So it brings me a lot of joy. So when you get your swag, show me. <laughs> <laughs> And for people who aren't in the trusted seat in our call today or who might watch this later, uh, so they didn't get their uh, give airdrop and um, they, don't, they won't have the, the G-Love to get their swag. Uh, so there's probably different kinds of profiles who, are, who want to participate. Those who are um, creating projects, 
Um, and I think Ashley explained pretty well how to create a project and get verified. I don't know if you want to add a little bit more to that. And then the other profile is people who want to donate. Uh, and I'd love to have somebody sort of, you know, walk, t just talk about like what the next steps would be for each of those type of profiles. So somebody who's brand new, has just heard of the Give Economy right now, is just watching this video, the profile of someone who has a project, they're on the ground, they want to fund some really important work, what should they do next? And then the person who wants to donate and, and match with those people on the ground, uh, what should they do next? And I'll throw it to anyone who wants to take it. I can take the donors. At least the donors should uh, just go get some crypto and donate to their favorite projects. I mean, if you care about, if you want to donate, why would you donate anywhere else? Like even donating in the fiat world is so annoying, right? Like you go and it's like, oh, I better save my receipts and file it with my taxes. Oh, I want to donate to this project. Oh, they're not in my tax jurisdiction. I'm not going to donate to them. I only do it if I get my tax deduction, right? Well. That's over. That's over. We don't need that. We don't need borders, jurisdictions. If you want to donate to uh, to a project on <coughs> on Give It, you get it. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter if they're a legal entity. It doesn't matter uh, where you're paying taxes or if you're paying taxes. You can donate your your crypto to a project on Give It and get subsidized for it. So, uh, I, if you care about uh, you know making a change in this world and want to use capital that you've earned to do it, uh, Give It is the number one place for sure. Yeah, and I would love to just like add to that that you can really donate any tokens. We talk often a lot about like, donating gifts. Oh, oh and Elizabeth. You Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what? Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Hold on, I'll get it. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Somebody's using our blender. It's so it's so it's so um, so yeah. we talk a lot about, it's sorry. It's um, <laughs> we, we talk a lot about donating um, gift tokens and like you get gift backs and then you can donate your gift tokens, but you can actually donate like ETH or DAI or XDAI, like uh, the Giveth platform, uh, Giveth.io supports donations both on mainnet and on XDAI. And there's like a huge bunch of tokens that you can donate to verified projects to be eligible for gift backs. And um, just recently on our forum, we posted uh, the full list of eligible tokens. And um, but we want like we want any like any good tokens that you like that are like that are that have uh, liquidity and that are like not not scammy tokens. We want people to be able to donate to the pro to the project. So um, if there's a token that you want to donate that's like a good token, um, you can just add it to the forum post and then we'll review it as a community and then add it to the give backs token list. So there's like a huge bunch of tokens that can get donated to be eligible for give backs. And um, yeah, and we're, and we're happy to add more to that list as well. Oh, wow. How many did you say there were? I don't know. About? Um, hmm. I feel like it's like around, no, it's less than that. I less think it's probably that, like, like 50 or 60 or no, maybe a little more, but. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, okay. To maybe like it's 80, 80 to 100 tokens. Yeah. Yeah. 80 to 100 tokens. It's basically any of the tokens that are in the drop down okay. menu. So you go to a give, go to give to a verified project on Give It, and then the drop down menu, you can just select any of those tokens, and they're all eligible for give back. So you don't have to check the forum, but if there's something there that you want to donate, um, you can add it to, to the forum post, but you could also donate it, but you wouldn't be able to get give backs. Um, we just need to be able to get the price for it. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's all. So that, that's the only limitation. Uh, if you care, if you have a token that you want to be able to donate with and get give backs, post it on the forum. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I, okay. Oh, yeah. So if you're a donor, what are you waiting for? <laughs> uh, uh, that's, that's the long and short of it. Actually, it's uh, true. And uh, so actually, maybe you want to uh, share, like, if somebody, if you're on, um, you're on the ground and you're not really familiar with Web3 and you have a project that you want to fund, it's something crucial. It's a, it's a recovery for a typhoon in the Philippines. Uh, what's your next step? Well, I think the coolest part about... Um being able to create a project on Giveth is that a lot of these projects who aren't familiar with Web3 can start out very easily. We have a Taurus integration, so people can sign up if they don't have an ETH address already or a wallet or a MetaMask. They can sign up using just an email address and a wallet will be created for them with Taurus. Um, and then they can use that to then create their project. So on the site, it's really easy. You just go click create a project, put the name of your project in there, description, we, we encourage, you know, you can use rich text, so there's images, videos, like make your description as elaborate as possible to really like connect with the donors you're going to be giving to your project. 
Um, and then it will get reviewed and listed on the homepage. And then the next step after that would be like the verification. And you can, it's an application that you fill out. We just need to collect a bit more information about your project and the intended impact. And um, yeah, then we go from there. Yeah, and that's that's the beginning. You know, uh, the real goal of Give It is to take nonprofits, meet them where they are, make it easy for them to take like dip their toes into the Web three space. And once they start, if they start succeeding, then we want we're we're hoping to build kind of a an on ramp to become a Commons effectively. And this is why it's so great to be at the Commons Stack AMA because you know while this stuff hasn't been built yet. We're kind of just watching the common stack and waiting for the common stack to figure out how to build these these uh, you know purpose driven economies so that the nonprofits can w skill themselves up with Web three space and and actually build, launch their own economies and uh, maybe maybe I can just really quickly one run through what that looks like so uh, the first step is of course just raising some crypto. And once they've raised some crypto, maybe they log in with their email or they log in with Google. It's like, hey, did you know that you raised like $2,000 and Google could just take your money or your sysadmin for your email account could just take your money? Maybe you should consider getting a MetaMask. You know? And that's kind of like the first step. But we'll only approach those that succeed. It's kind of like its own uh, incentive mechanism. right? Uh, you care now because you have crypto. And now... Also, if you receive crypto and you're a verified project, well, then your your um, donors actually have give tokens. So we want to create a way. It's this give curation. This is a project that Lauren is is uh, helping to set up and organize. But uh, so where people can stake their give tokens behind projects that they like and curate the give backs. So the when it, right now we have staking just on the farms. It's like 100% ETH staking, 100%. Uh, on Xdyne and Ether, and we want to contribute. That's that's by design because we want eventually people to be staking, uh, but then also locking their give tokens for a period of time, and then that gives them voting power to actually decide which projects are the most important projects on the Give platform. And this becomes a, a curating mechanism. And the projects that have more give tokens staked behind them, well, their the donors to those projects will get more give backs. That's the, the first like way that we curate this system. Uh, but when people actually stake tokens behind these projects, uh, when there's a, when they when the project receives a lot of token stake behind them, we're going to approach those projects. We're going to say, hey, have you heard of the Common Stacks reward system that they've tra trailblazed with the TEC? Uh, it's it's really important that you start like tracking who in your community is doing a good job because you might get an economy one day. And this, these people, these volunteers, they're your trusted seed. The, the people who are working for the nonprofit and doing good work. Uh, they're, those are the people who uh, you know, have expertise and uh, have put in the, the, the labor to actually support the, your cause. So let's start giving them a reputation token like impact hours. And once they uh, eventually, once they have this reputation system in place, and they've staked enough, and they have enough token stake behind them, we can actually uh, launch a GERV. This is a a GERV. Uh, yeah, we all we all like. How did we get stuck with the GERV name? It's a long story. But basically, the uh, the when you have these to give tokens staked behind the project, uh, let's say there's a hundred k worth of give tokens staked behind this project. If we use a reserve ratio of twenty five percent, we can make a GERV. That actually has a 400k market cap. So the people who staked the tokens uh, and curated that project, uh, when they when they decide to launch, when the project decides to launch their own GERV, uh, they'll get let's say 200k worth of token worth of US dollars worth of the project's tokens, and the other 200k of the project tokens can be distributed to the volunteers and the and the um, other uh, you know people who are doing the work to get that off. And now the project has a DAO. Now that project has an economy. They may have started just coming on with with a MetaMask, you know, or, or with Google signing in with Google. But now their community has learned to DAO through the Give uh, platform and has their own give backed economy. And then if they really do well, uh, they can they can and they, they grow their economy. Where now instead of instead of having volunteers and donors, they have investors. 
and and shareholders. Uh, this economy can actually out even outgrow the Giveth platform and just be its own community, like Gitcoin or OneHive or Giveth itself, where they have their own token. It's not backed by Give anymore. They just turn off their bonding curve. Those Give tokens are just locked uh, forever. I mean, we'll de- we'll figure out the tokenomics of everything later, but. Uh, Event, this is the real goal. The goal is to get to get rid of the need for donations and act, and actually allow uh, projects to have a way to reward the, themselves for the good work that they're doing. So that's and this is this is the real dream of Give It, and it starts where we are now, the Give Economy launch, but is nowhere near the end. Yeah, you know, it's wildly ambition and I, but ambitious, and I, I feel like because of what this t- you, you guys have already accomplished, like, it's kind of, it's inevitable, you know, it's not like it might happen, it just feels so inevitable that that, that will be realized. We're at the top of the hour, um, but I have one more question, uh, if anyone wants to stick around, and it's just to everyone on the team as sort of closing, uh, which, uh, you know, there's a lot of the Give Economy, Give Backs, Give Stream, Give Gardens, Give Farm, which one do you think is most impactful? Uh, and I'll uh, pass to Sam to start. <laughs> As I said, I, I like the idea of having a garden that allows people to be proactive and use the give economy as a, a, a launching thing so it can grow. Um, obviously, I am biased. I, 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 I will pass it to Lauren. <laughs> I think for me, uh, the Give Backs program is really powerful. I think this like uh, rewarding donors really attracts a lot of donors onto the platform and then it it like encourages people and it gets them excited about projects that are actually doing good work so they like came here for the crypto they were like give backs is cool and then they found a bunch of cool projects doing things that they care about and then they're supporting those projects and those projects are doing things on the ground benefiting society and then we all benefit from that and so i think like the give backs program is really just like pulling people into this like the system of like supporting each other in like a global way that's like even outside of web3 and i think that's really powerful um, I'll pass it to Mitch. Mm, I'd, I'd go further and say the Give Farm uh, is <laughs> my favorite because, my, for many reasons, but um, going to Griff's point, it's like the Give Backs and the whole system wouldn't have as much of an impact if it didn't have any liquidity, right? So it's kind of like the Give Backs is cool, but it's cool because the Give Farm has liquidity in it. And I think the other dynamic too is we're bringing in people that normally wouldn't pay attention to this sort of stuff. So people who just want to like play the DeFi game, they come in, they're like, wow, these APRs are great. And then they're like, wait, hold on, give backs, give stream, verify projects. And so it kind of like blows their mind once they get playing the game. And I'll give it to Ashley. Yeah, I would have to say that the give backs program is my favorite too. Um, I did a lot of work in the nonprofit space. And so helping the projects was kind of the key reason that I started contributing to give it. And I really think that, like, watching the Give Back program, like, transmute, I don't know. For instance, we had a lot of airdrop hunters on our platform at the beginning. And they're just donating, like, 50 cents worth of XDAI or whatever to a project just to try to get something back. And to really watch the psychology be changed and, like, transmute this um, intention of, like, greed and what do I get into something that's, like, actually benefiting these projects and, like, making good things happen in the world is really powerful to me. And I'll talk to you Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to talk... I think I have to say Givebacks is the best because it really changes the way that... Don- it makes give it the best place to donate in the world. Hands down, it is... If you want to donate somewhere, give it is the place to do it. It's the, only, it's the easiest borderless, frictionless way to donate and get a, a tax deduction equivalent kind of solution. But the give stream is what makes it, you know, it's just so cool. I think it's like the coolest, most innovative thing that we that we put out there. Uh, I mean, the garden, I, I don't know, they're all so great, but uh, the give stream is cool because how, you know, people go to play to earn programs and they, they get some tokens, right? But with the Give Stream, when you play to earn in Give It, you get a stream, you get residual income. And that's so cool. You know, you're earning instead of, it's like we're adding a dimension to tokens. We're adding a velocity. We're taking a position and turning it into a velocity. You're getting, you're getting a stream. 
Uh, I just think that's cool. Like increasing your flow rate, it, it it's way it it's like it's like uh, play to earn squared. This was a very cool hour, and I almost don't want it to end, but I think that we have to. Uh, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure and honor to speak with you guys, and for you guys to come and drop so much amazing information and knowledge. There is a Give with Discord in the community hall channel, so please go hop onto the community uh, to the Discord channel uh, to Give it it's Discord channel uh, and uh, continue the conversation there. I just want to say thanks so much, everyone, for joining. And thanks to you, uh, Griff, and Ashley, and Mitch, and Lauren, and Sam, for your time today. Thank you so much, Sam. Great great work facilitating. Thank you, Sam. Amazing. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Quick. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not usually the first to leave. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's fine. It's fine. No, because we got.